Good morning, Mountain View. Good morning. Thanks for braving the weather. It might be rain by now, hopefully before we leave. For those of you who chose to join us by live stream, what a blessing. I don't get to see you by face. We have an online campus pastor that's ready to engage you. And I heard from several last week how fun it was to actually engage and interact during the sermon. So he's there, questions, ideas, by all means, share it with him. We can grow together that way. For the next four weeks, we're entering into what some call the diamond of Romans chapter, well, of the book of Romans, the eighth chapter of Romans. If you have a Bible at home, I encourage you to start reading it. Read it every week. Crease it. Bible starts falling open to Romans chapter 8. One of the commentators that I was reading had a great kind of summary that I was captivated by. And he said, well, could have been she, don't know, I didn't actually look at who wrote it. Um, someone, someone said, we enter this chapter with no condemnation. We close it with no separation. And in between all things work together for good to those who love God. And I really like that summary of the scripture, and so I thought, wow, is there anything better than that? I mean, we are here on Super Sunday, there's a game tonight, you know, whatever, you know, my team's not there, so, and how is it that I get a Patriot fan on the soundboard every single year, you know, because he mutes me when I say something bad about the Patriots, so just get used, if you're at home and your sound goes out, don't touch your TV, don't touch your computer, it's just because I got muted here by the sound operator, so understand that, so, when you look at Romans chapter 8 and all the beauty of that chapter, we have to remember that it doesn't just start there. It's not in isolation. The Apostle Paul, we think the big Apostle Paul, you know, godly man, still a man. In Romans chapter 7, the very last words, he said this of Romans 7, What a wretched man I am. Who will rescue me from this body that is subject to death? Thanks be to God who delivers me through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then I myself in my mind am a slave to God's law, but in my sinful nature am a slave to the law of sin. And I look at these words and it's almost like Paul saying, look, who? Is there anybody out there who's going to enable me to live for God? Is there anybody out there who's going to help me win in God's eyes? And I thought as I'm crafting these questions, this is a perfect question to ask on Super Bowl Sunday. Because here on this Sunday, we're going to look at, and beginning today and for the next three weeks, we're going to look at the Apostle Paul's MO for spiritual victory. We've been talking about grace all through January. Now we're going to get to see how grace operates in our lives and how we can accept that, embrace that, and live it out. And so no matter which team wins tonight, we have to remember it is only a game. But your life, your life at home, my life, it's no game. And what you do tonight and what you at home do tomorrow night and what I do on Tuesday night, it matters. It matters a lot. We need a winning strategy. We have the grace of God. We talked about it for a month. Now, what does that mean as we try to live it out? So Paul starts out with that big therefore for them in the book of Romans. Therefore, in Romans 8, 1. Therefore, there is no condemnation for those who are in, should have capitalized it, but it wasn't in Scripture, so I didn't put it on the screen that way, in Christ Jesus. So he makes a proclamation, and I ask a question. Really? Really, Paul, are you literally saying to me, and I looked it up, dictionary, that's where I go a lot, condemnation. Are you saying to me that in God, there is no blame, no censure, no criticism from God for all the stupid things I've done? Some woman, a woman, not some woman, that's how I say it. A woman in the first service, before the service ever starts, said, Mark, remember my testimony? She start Romans chapter 8. She looked at me and said, God has freed me from a life of stupidity and didn't leave me to die a sinner. I was like, now that's powerful. God has freed me from a life of stupidity. A lifetime, she said, of stupidity. And didn't allow me to die a sinner. All the blame, censure, criticism, not there. I don't know about you. I don't have to look too far back. Sometimes it's days, sometimes it's months, sometimes it's hours before I can feel condemned 
in my own mind of my thoughts and my actions before the game ever gets started or before I ever start playing the very next day. And so if you and I don't understand the truth or don't embrace the truth of Romans chapter 8, then we're going to live outside of spiritual victory. Every single day, we're going to line up on the line of scrimmage every morning. We're going to look at, across at the defense, oftentimes of our own making, and we're going to feel defeated before we ever get started. And so I was really looking for some great graphics. I mean, it was just nothing out there. I mean, I couldn't find five defensive linemen lined up. I even looked for paid stuff on Shutterstock. Couldn't find it. So bear with me as you think about this. The front five of the defense. Sometimes six, sometimes they pack the line with eight. Let's go with five for a minute. Every day we get up and we want to succeed. We want to spiritually thrive. And yet we look across at the defensive line, sometimes of our own making, and I made a list of my own. Left, I'll start just my right, your left. Left defensive end. Our own conscience, I named him. Reminding us of our failure, guilt, and shame. Left tackle, not non-Christian friends. Pointing out your or my inconsistency. Right in front of me every single day, right over top of the center. Get the nose guard. That's your past memories. Past memories reminding us of our past failures. Right tackle over here, I called him perfection of the law. Perfection of the law showing us how imperfect we are. And then my last one was right defensive end. I actually put Christian friends there. Oftentimes you've experienced in life, teenagers, maybe you've experienced that, when you've failed, when you've made mistakes, instead of grace and mercy, you've, you've experienced judgment and accusations. Sometimes that defensive line doesn't look very good. And we line up there every single morning to play a brand new set of downs. And that's what we face. And if that's not enough, I believe that Satan has packed the linebacking cord with the rulers, principalities, and spiritual forces of this dark world. And you ask yourself, who wants to go up against that every single day? Do I have any chance at all of thriving in the midst of that? And yet, in all of that, Paul says in Romans chapter 8, verse 1, Therefore, there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. And so I had to write down, I'm going, to, I'm going over this again this morning at breakfast, and I have to write in a pencil, a pen, Mark, Individuals in this church, you may feel defeated on any given day, but in Christ, you're not sacked. In Christ, you're not out of the game. In Christ, you're not condemned. You've got to remember that, or you won't even attempt it. And so I started walking through here and processing through this. I believe this is why every single morning, you and I can suit up, Go out there against a defense stack to get with painful, embarrassing, and shameful memories that oftentimes debilitate us. And how is it that we can do this? The Bible says in Romans 8 2, because, because you're not condemned, you're in Christ Jesus, you can still play, you can still find victory. Why? Because through Christ Jesus, the law of the Spirit who gives life, has set you free from the law of sin and death. Now there are two laws in operation when you give your life to Jesus Christ. In Christ, we have the indwelling Holy Spirit given to us at salvation when we believe in Jesus Christ by faith. He doesn't, the Holy Spirit just doesn't come. He brings a brand new nature with him. And that begins to operate in our lives. And so we have that the Holy Spirit is in complete union with Christ. So oftentimes we talk about if it's a computer analogy, he brings a brand new operating system. Football analogy for today, he brings a brand new playbook. A brand new set of plays of which we have the possibility of experiencing daily spiritual victory in our lives, in our purity, in our marriage, in our jobs, in our integrity. It's there. It's possible. God brings that with the Spirit when he enters our lives. And the Holy Spirit, the way I kind of, I mean, sometimes analogies break down, but bear with me. This is the way I kind of saw it. Sitting there at my desk going, wow, how's this really look? Quarterback has a, has a speaker in his helmet. He's getting it either from the line on the sidelines or he's getting it from the offensive coordinator up in the, up in the stands or up in the box. And I realize that Jesus Christ, where is he? He's in the box seat of heaven right now, sitting at the right hand of God the Father. And he sees the plays. He sees your life. He sees the mess we make. He sees the victories. And he celebrates with us. The point is that Jesus Christ is building his church on a day-by-day -day basis.
full-time job for Jesus until he comes again. He is totally in to you and me. So he's calling the plays. He sees what needs to be done. You ask him, he tells you. Comes through the Holy Spirit inside of us. Now you'll break down somewhere, but bear with me. Microphones there, speakers there, we hear it. We all have two operating systems. We have an old sinful nature, unredeemable by Christ. Christ gave up on that nature a long time ago. If you see Christ, has Christ ever given up on anything? Yes, your sinful nature. It's unredeemable. It's gone. We still wrestle with it. God, through Christ, through the Holy Spirit, brought us a brand new nature. And with it came an operating system. With it came a brand new set of plays. And we can take cues from him. And the Bible says in verse 3, for what the law was powerless to do because it was weakened by the flesh. Remember, the unredeemable flesh. God did by sending his own spirit, his own son, in the likeness of sinful flesh to be a sin offering. And so he condemned sin in our flesh in order that the righteousness, the perfection, the perfect, perfect requirements of the law might be fully met in us. Not through the flesh. We can't do that. It comes to us listening to a new coach, a new operating system, a new playbook in our lives. Fully met in us who do not live according to the flesh, but live according to the Spirit. Now I can imagine many of you sitting in this room. I know I can. And I'm probably most of you at home as well. Know what it feels like to be sacked on a daily basis by the law. Every day when you realize you didn't do it right, you said it wrong, you shouldn't have done that, you shouldn't have touched that, you shouldn't have looked at that, the law is right there to remind you, sacked, sacked, sacked again. We know what that feels like. We know what we're supposed to do, but we don't do it. That's what the Apostle Paul said we wrestle with in Romans chapter 7. You want to go back and read that? I encourage you to do so. It's like the defense knows the playbook. It's like they're stealing our signals. I don't believe anybody in the NFL has ever stolen anything, but I'm just saying, maybe. <laughs> kind of feels that way sometimes. Go ahead and mute me now. But unfortunately, the defense that we're up against didn't need to steal anything because you as the quarterback of your own life often taking the cues from the defensive play caller until Jesus Christ came into this world through God the Father. Jesus Christ has enabled you and me to take our play calls from him and experience sustainable drives down the field of life in the midst of spiritual and physical oppression. Do you believe that? If you don't, we'll never step up to the line of scrimmage. We won't even come out dressed for the game. It's just the way it's going to be. The key is we keep our eyes on the goal. Paul wrote this, kept writing to the church of Rome, those who live according to the flesh. Remember, it's unredeemable. Christ says, I can't do anything with that. It has its mind set on what the flesh desires. That's where I'm taking my cues from. Oh, the flesh wants what? Okay. You put your nose know, here too now. They can't hear anything. Put their hands over the earpieces. But to those who live according with the Spirit, have their mind set on what the Spirit desires. Jesus Christ in the, in, the, in the box, talking to the Holy Spirit, talking to me. What does he want me to do? I desire to fulfill the laws of righteousness. I desire to feel, I've got a brand new nature. I have the capacity. I'm no longer obligated to sin. I'm not in bondage to sin anymore. I can choose to sin in Christ, but I'm no longer in bondage to sin in the old nature when I give my heart to Jesus Christ. So who am I going to listen to? Jesus Christ has enabled me to take those plays. And so every day we get to determine who's going to call the plays in our lives. Every single one of us here, you watching at home, myself, the one who's talking in front of you right now. Will the defensive linemen of law, habits, addictions, accusations, hurts prevail? Or will you, Christian, those of you who profess faith in Jesus Christ, will you allow the resurrected Christ speaking through the Holy Spirit, fill your heart and minds with truth, that can allow you to win out on a day-by-day -day basis. You go see some cool things tonight. Might be a great halftime show. Maybe not. You see some cool plays on the field of life. Are you and I walking the cool plays? Are we listening to the Holy Spirit? Sometimes we listen to the wrong spirit. But the Bible says in verse 7, The mind governed, ruled, has authority over me. By the flesh is hostile to God. 
Remember, the flesh is irredeemable. It's never going to listen. It does not submit to God's law, nor can it do so. Those who are in the realm of the flesh cannot please God. Understand, and you'll never attempt to please God. Living according to the flesh is never pleasing the Father from the get-go. You, however, talking about those who are children of God, are not in the realm of the flesh. You still wrestle with it. You're just not in there in the muck and mire with it. But are in the realm of the Spirit, if indeed the Spirit of God lives in you. And if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, they don't belong to Christ. This past week, I decided it's kind of one of those moments, God, should I go? I got things to do. No, just, you need to go. And finally, it's okay, I'm just going to go. And I went over to the county jail and went to go visit a friend who's in there. And I knew he was discouraged, and I was discouraged for him. And I went in and I asked to see him, and he came over, and we talked through the glass. And we talked about, you know, here's, you know, look, you know, two years of incarceration. I said to you, what, what good did that do to redeem the mind and the heart for Christ. And this is what it does. Zero. It's called a penal system, not a redemptive system. Only Christ can redeem the heart and the mind. And so he was out for five, six, seven weeks. And then he OD'd. And he almost died. One of our own mountain viewers in Arkandom. Brought him back to life. And praise God he doesn't have any major physical injuries. But as we walked through the scriptures together, just had to share and about this whole idea when the Bible says, submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. And as he's listening to me talking, he uh, suddenly, I'm just sharing about this old idea of resistance. You come out of jail and your resistance is this wide and over time, because this is the sinful nature. The sinful nature has no desire to listen to the Spirit of God. So you come out with great desire, but the sinful nature goes, I can't do it anymore, and take a hit. And suddenly in the middle of that, he looked at me and said, I didn't submit, did I? No. You resisted for seven weeks until you almost killed yourself. So now we're going to spend the time learning biblically what it means to submit. Because unless we yield first to the nature within us, that's the spiritual nature, led by the Holy Spirit, listening to the Spirit of Christ, at the right hand of God the Father, all we're doing in this world is resisting, fail, repent. Oh, resisting, fail, repent. That's all we're doing. And so we're going to talk about submission for quite a while as I spend time with him. So I ask you the same question I ask him, thinking about football was coming up. If you're on God's team, if you're a Christian, why are you listening to the dead voices of depravity and hopelessness and despair and worthlessness that's speaking smack to you from the other side of the line? Remember that on a football team, there's a defensive play caller, usually a linebacker. Ryan Shazier was ours before he got hurt and dangerously hurt in week 15 of the Steelers. That's a big position on the team. They look at what the offense is getting ready to do. They call the play to line up the defense, what they believe is going to be right. But oftentimes, it's almost like in life, you walk up to the line of scrimmage. We've got that sinful nature. We're operating out of that, and we feel bad about something. We basically look over at the linebacker and say, what, what place should I run? And he goes, I'll run this. And they know exactly what to do in that moment to take us out and put us right on our backside once again. That's not what Christ wants us to do. Folks, if we want to win, we can't do that anymore. We have a new signal caller, Jesus Christ, and we follow the plays he calls. You and I will begin to experience life and peace. Those are the two words God says. In the spirit, we experience life and peace. That's what we talked about at the jail, across the glass. It may be slow at first. You'll get up on a single day, and you're going, man, I don't know if I can do this, man. There's, the, there's my Christian friends. They think bad of me, and there's my unchurched friends, and they're just skeptical of me, and there's my past memories right in front of me. I see them every single day. But you trust the play caller. You trust the spirit. You have no trust in the flesh. And you get up to the line of scrimmage and you snap that ball. And you know what? You may only squeak a yard or two by the tackle. But you experience a little bit of love of, the God, of God the Father. You get up to that line again. You snap again on second down. Maybe you just get three yards past. And you get a little bit into the, at the linebacker takes you down. But you got three yards and you experience a little bit of peace. And you get up, to a lot of, get up to the line of scrimmage one more time, and you snap it again, a little, uh, little dime, dime and dunk type thing. You'll probably see a lot of that tonight. 
Throw it, man, you just get tackled quick, but you got another three yards. Man, you feel a lot of joy. But now it's fourth down, man. You're looking at that same defense you've looked at day in and day out. Most, it, most of the time makes you want to stay in the locker room. And then you say, I'm going to go for it. Because God has told me what to do. And I can get past past memories and hurts and accusation and shame looking at me and staring me in the face. I can win over the spiritual rulers and principalities and rules of this dark world. Because of the Christ that's in me. And we go for them fourth down. And we break through the tackles. And we run into the secondary. We're heading towards the goal. Why? Because Christ is in us. And we're trusting his voice over the voices that usually leave us on our backside. I asked the question, why did we spend the month of January taking videos of the Feather Life Group? Asking people to consider the Bible app. Maybe you don't need an app. Maybe you're consistent in the word of God. But let me tell you. The number one way I believe God speaks to us is through the counsel he's already given us. I'm really sat up here. I don't have a chainsaw today, but I got a sword. And that's what he's given us to fight the battles for spiritual victory. The Bible says, but if Christ is in you, verse 10, even though your body is subject to death because of sin, the spirit gives life because of righteousness. And if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies because of the spirit who lives in you. Leave that on the screen for just a minute. Look at it. Do you believe it? This is God's counsel. Now I can preach it and it can go right over our heads and right out of our heart. Nah, whatever. Do we believe it? And if you do, ask the question I've been asking of myself. Sometimes in for others and the person I went to see in jail, are you ready? Are you ready to defeat an old opponent who has stuck around way too long and has beaten you up more times than you can count? And I'm not talking about the New England Patriots. Because <laughs> they've been around a long time. It's time for them to go. In Christ. <laughs> I didn't see him back there. I thought I could get away with it. <laughs> you and I, we are offered the life of Christ in our mortal bodies through the Holy Spirit living in us. There's a big game tonight. Might last three and a half, four hours, depending on the halftime show. Life's going to return to normal. Tonight, you may experience, if you're a sports fan, the thrill of victory or the agony of defeat, one way or the other. But because the Spirit of God is in you, we have life, period. We have victory, period, if we listen to the divine play caller. You see, there's now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. What? When those evil thoughts come into your mind, and they will. Had a lot of talks after service about just what I said here at the end. The Spirit of God lives in you. You cannot be possessed by the enemy. You can be oppressed. And one of the things I've learned a lot, and I hate it, is the power of suggestion of the enemy. He is a master suggester of the things you should do, think about, take, ingest, look at. It's amazing. Not in a good way, but he's incessant with it. The thing I'm asking you to do is ask yourself the question, when those suggestions come your way, stop in that moment and ask, Lord, where did that play come from? Did that come from the box seat at the right hand of God the Father? Did that come from the defensive play call of the linebacker over there, of the principalities of this dark world? Where did that come from? If it came from the linebacker, cast into hell where it belongs. If it came from your offensive coordinator, Jesus Christ, in the box seat by the right hand of God the Father, then you take that cue and you do it. Folks, we have to begin to learn to submit to him and walk in victory. So I'm going to ask you to close your eyes for just a moment. Those at home, we're not done yet. Not by a long shot, but I'm going to ask you to pray with me for just a second. Lord, in this moment, I'm asking, it's not a favor, because it's already your desire, that you would speak into the lives of each and every person that is in this room, those who are participating from home today. As we honestly ask you a question, God, I recognize there are two natures that operate in me. I'm no longer in the realm of the sinful nature, but I still have that sinful nature. And it suggests and it speaks and it listens to that defensive linebacker of the principalities of this world. 
but I also have in Christ, if I'm a believer, a brand new nature, brought with the Holy Spirit, a nature that desires to live out the truths of God's word, the counsel of God's word, and to take me down the field towards victory. God, I ask you today, right where I sit, whether it be at home in this room, will you honestly help me acknowledge which voice I'm listening to? Which microphone in my helmet, the analogy, folks, has my ear? And Lord, if it's the wrong one, God, right now in this place, right at home, I'm asking for a spirit of repentance to fall on this place. That through the power of the Holy Spirit that lives in Christians, that a true spirit of confession and repentance would fall right here on game day. That God, you would do what only you can do. Remove from us the sin and the guilt and the shame. Make us, God, give us the capacity. And God, may we, God, have the desire to listen to your voice. Listen to your counsel through the word and through prayer and through fellow believers that we join together, sometimes in life groups, sometimes at work, sometimes in recreation. God, have your way. I need this moment. I'm praying a prayer for me, Lord, and then on behalf of this church family. Lord, there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. And Lord, that's why we can share in communion today. Lord, we are that reed, that broken reed, that bruised reed that hasn't been broken, that smoldering wick, Scripture says, that hadn't been snuffed out. We feel defeated. Maybe we were yesterday, but we are not condemned because you put condemnation upon your Son on the cross of Calvary. So if you're in this room today and you're, or at home and you've never surrendered your life to Christ, I'm encouraging you, man, nothing today will match. Even if you're a Patriot fan or Eagle fan, nothing today will match you surrendering your life to Jesus Christ and being adopted into his family and experiencing the power of God beginning to operate on the inside of you with a brand new playbook, a brand new offensive coordinator. Lord, many in this room could testify to that right now. We could spend all day praising you. So I'm asking for that right now. I'm asking for the miracle of salvation in this room and those at home. Have your way, Lord. Lord, there is not a chain in this world that can hold us anymore in Christ. We can choose to sin, but we are no longer enslaved to it. We are free in Christ Jesus. So, Father, I'm asking today that as we have this time of response, whether people sit or watch in a home and sit up and stand and shout or just watch the words, Lord. Lord, would you speak into our spirit that we would hear you, our offensive coordinator, speak into our lives right now. That if we believe these words, we'll celebrate them through song. That if we're not quite sure if we believe these words, we will look at those words and ask, what would my life be like if I believe the truth of those words? Speak, Lord, in a supernatural and powerful way in this place and those at home right now. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen.